G'day YouTube and welcome back to Perfecting Pete. Today we're going to be talking about how to calculate your macro targets, uh, particularly keto, which I'm just embarked on. So I'm going to run through specifically how I came up with my targets uh, and hopefully you can use the, the, the maths to do exactly the same thing. Uh, if this is your first time joining us on the channel, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I release videos every Tuesday on my weight loss journey and all the tips and tricks on, on fitness, nutrition and weight loss I learn along the way. So mash that subscribe button to see those weekly videos. Uh, if you get some value out of this video, please hit that like button and leave me a comment. Let me know if you've used this, uh, this calculation process to derive your macros uh, and how you're experiencing that. So let's get started. So we're going to start, I mean, look, this is going to be quite a math heavy episode. Uh, you know, we are talking about how to calculate macro targets. Um, you stick those macro targets into an app like Lose It or MyFitnessPal or any of the other data-based apps for food. You track your food that you eat against those targets. Um, so I'm, I'm not really going to go too much into how uh, to figure out what your targets should be. I'm basically going to make the assumption that, you know, roughly, um, you know, uh, what ratios you'll use or that you'll do some research based on the information I'm going to provide you now. So um, to start with, you need to figure out your daily energy requirement. That is how much energy do you do you burn on a daily basis just being you? So that's your your uh, basal metabolic rate, if you like. So, um, you know, pretty easy calculation. It's not 100% accurate, but it's a good indicator. It's a good place to get started is to calculate your weight in pounds by a multiplier. Now I might actually shift over a little bit. Hopefully I won't, I'll stay shot um, to give me some space so I can um, put some math up on the screen next to me. So, cause it's gonna be too hard to track this otherwise. So I'm sorry about the mess in the background. Uh, and if you watched my video last week, I'm not just, ha I don't just happen to be wearing exactly the same clothes as last week's video. I um, am actually recording this back to back because this is the last time I'll be recording from my study. I'm actually packing up directly after this video is recorded and um, getting ready to move. So the next video that you will see will um, will be from my new place. Um, so I'm actually recording this a week in advance. Um, so that's a little exciting and very stressful. Everybody hates moving. I know I hate moving anyway. So we've got lots of space for, for calculating. So let's get let's let's start again. Your weight in pounds times a multiplier. Now that multiplier changes depending on your lifestyle. So if you leave, lead a, um, you know, a primarily sedentary lifestyle, so you're not very active, you work in an office, you don't do a whole lot of exercise or any exercise at all. Maybe you go for a walk in the morning, but it's not very brisk. Um, use a multiplier of 11. If you exercise two to three times a week, I'd say that you're, you're moderately active, use a multiplier of 12. If you're exercising intensely four to six times per week, use a multiplier of 13. And if you've got an active job and you work out intensely four to six times a week, use a multiplier of 14. So those are the ranges. You know, if you, if you jump on the internet and look at uh, calculating macro targets or calculating uh, calorie intake or energy intake, you'll generally see that people will recommend you use a multiplier of your weight in pounds. And that multiplier will range somewhere from 11 to 14. Um, now the program I was recently on uh, left me a, um, gave me three numbers, a multiplier of 13, 14, or even 15. So, um, you know, it, mileage varies. People have different opinions. That's just how it works out. Um, so, you know, in my case, for my example, when I calculated my weight, it was uh, 207 pounds and I multiplied by 13. Uh, that gave me a daily energy intake of 2,691 calories. And if it looks like I'm looking off screen, it's because I'm reading from a sheet because I've written all this stuff down. There's no way I was going to remember all of my numbers throughout this episode. So um, please bear with me. So now you know what your daily energy intake is to maintain your current weight given no external factors. So in my case, it told me 2,691 calories. Now we need to create a deficit in order to lose weight. You need to eat less energy than you're burning on a day-to-day -day basis um, in order to, to lose weight. So to, to start burning energy, to burn more energy than you're eating, ultimately you lose weight. So it's recommended that you stick to no more than a 20 to 30% deficit on your daily energy intake requirements. So in my example, 
I have, uh, I need 2,691 calories to maintain my current weight. Um, a multi, uh, you know, if I times that by 0.3 or 30%, that gives me a, a calculated intake daily calorie intake of 1,884 calories in order to lose weight. Now, in my case, I've been um, losing weight now for what, six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, you know, since Christmas, it's April. So four months, uh, 12 weeks. Um, I was a little bit more ambitious with my weight loss targets. I want to lose weight a little bit faster. I want to maintain, you know, one to one and a half kilograms a week, which is what, two and a half, three pounds a week something in that space, I'll put it up on the screen. Um, so I calculated my own at my own target at 1,621 calories per day. That's going to be my energy intake in order to create quite a large deficit uh, between what I need to maintain my current body versus you know what I'm actually eating. So I'm gonna work off the math based around 1,621 calories from here on in. So that's step two. So, so far we've figured out our daily energy intake requirements um, to maintain our current weight and we've created a deficit to give us a number in calories that we need to eat to lose weight. Now we need to determine macro ratios. So we've talked before about carbohydrates, fat and protein, uh, their various um, benefits and, and you know how your body uses them. So there's lots of different ratios between those three macronutrients. Uh, and if you do some research on the internet, you'll generally find some approximations that will approach these. So a low carb diet for weight loss um, typically advises you to have somewhere between 40 and 50% of your energy um, coming from protein, between 30 and 40% of your energy coming from fat, and between 10 and 30% of your energy coming from carbohydrates. So I'll put a little pie chart up next to me because it's a much easier way to, to, um, to, to visualize it, the ratios, but uh, 40 to 50, 30 to 40, and 10 to 30 uh, percent. Now I'm currently, and I've just undertaken, I think it's day five or six, I've just started a ketogenic diet where it's very high in fat, very low in carbs. Now a strict keto diet, again, based on my research on the internet, gives me some specific ratios of 20% fat, 75%, sorry, 20% protein, 75% fat, and 5% carbohydrates. So that means I'm only getting, you know, I'm only getting 5% of my energy from carbs in a, on a daily basis on a strict keto diet. Now, I'm not quite there. My plan is to stick with a, a, a bit of a looser keto diet to start with to kind of ease into it. So uh, I've calculated my own ratios based on some other research I did. And basically I'm gonna sit on this for a week, see how I feel, and then I'm gonna shift to the strict keto. So my current macro breakdowns, my ratios, are 25% protein, 65% fat, and 10% carbs. So as you can see, I've bumped my carbs up 5%, I've bumped my protein up 5%, and I've dropped my fat the resulting 10. So there's the three ratios that I've, um, you know, that I'll put to you, uh, a low carb weight loss design diet, a strict keto diet, and the specific diet that I'm on. So now we use those ratios and we fold that back into our daily energy intake that we've calculated to lose weight. So don't forget, and I've said this in a couple of videos, you can use a formula of four grams per calorie for protein and carbohydrates and nine grams per calorie for fat. So some basic division, you know, for, I'm only gonna talk about my example just to make it easier in terms of the math on the screen. So my protein, I need 25% of my 1,621 calories to come from protein. So, 25% um, of 1621 is 405 and a quarter calories. Now, I so that's how many calories I need to eat from protein each day. If I divide that by four, that gives me 101 and a half grams of, car, uh, of protein that I need to eat per day. So now I know what my protein requirements are. Let's talk about carbohydrates. I said that I'd be eating 10% of my 1621 calories per day out of carbs. So that gives me 162.1 calories of carbohydrates. Again, if I divide that by four, that gives me 40.5 grams of carbohydrates per day. And finally, we have fat. 
So I said that I'd be eating 65% of my diet of, of 1621 calories um, using fat, which calculates to 1053.7 calories. And if I divide that by nine, because don't forget, you get nine calories per gram. So I divide 1053.7 by nine. That gives me 117 grams of fat. And that's it. I know it, it's complicated to get there, but once you do get there, the only thing I really care about at the end of it is I need to eat 101 and a half grams of protein, 40 and a half grams of fat, uh, of carbohydrates and 117 grams of fat per day. They're my macro targets. And now I can build my intermittent fasting based diet and nutrition plan on a daily basis around those three numbers. That's it for the video, nice and short. Uh, you know, it's less than 20 minutes long. That seems to be my average, no matter how hard I try to make these short. Um, just a quick update on my program. So I've just embarked on keto. Uh, so far, so good. I'm finding it interesting. I'm certainly finding that I have to tweak. Um, you know, I had a, um, a chicken meal using my, I built a meal around my traditional chicken breast with um, carbohydrates. Obviously I couldn't have any brown rice. I had some uh, beans instead of broccoli because I, I noticed that broccoli has quite a lot of carbs in it when I'm very strict on carbs. You know, the wrong vegetable can really throw me out. Um, but um, I, I found that I, I was getting too much protein and not enough fat out of chicken breast. It's a very lean meat. It's very good for a, um, for a diet and certainly a whole food diet. Uh, not so great for keto. So I've started cooking. Uh, now, if you've been following me on if you've been following my Instagram, uh, which I'll put up now, uh, you'll see a bunch of photos I've been taking of the food that I'm preparing. It's an interesting experience. I'm, I'm not a big cook. I've never really cooked a whole lot. I know how to cook roughly. Um, and I've got certain things that I've always known how to cook, but this is certainly pushing me to go out and cook some new stuff that I've never, never heard of or seen before. So, uh, I'll be playing with some coconut, um, coconut flour to make some homemade, keto approved dough as a base of a meat pie. That's going to be an interesting experience. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see photos and see if I've, if I was successful or I created a big messy disaster. <laughs> anyway, uh, in terms of how I'm going with my weight loss, uh, last week I was at 94 kilos as of last Monday on the dot. Uh, and as of today, I'm 91.8 kilos. Now I'm aware that you're watching this, um, uh, you know, a week after I've released the video. Unfortunately, my time machine's broken at the moment, so I can't give you what my weight was next Monday, which is, you know, the day before this video will go up. So I didn't do an update on my weight loss program in the last video because I was doing my final uh, science-based six-pack uh, review, which um, I'll throw the link up here. Here? Yeah, here. Um, I'll throw the link up, um, check it out, but I didn't talk about how, where I was on my own weight loss program. So you know, I'm kind of delaying this update. And when I next release a video, I'll give you the full two weeks and how I went. Anyway, that's it for the video. Uh, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, I mean, this is a very basic, um, quick and dirty rundown on how to calculate your macros, uh, particularly in my case for keto, but it will help you to figure out your macro targets based on any ratio. I've given you another example of a low carb um, weight loss diet ratio for your macros, but jump on the internet, do some research. It's pretty easy. Go into Google and type in, uh, weight loss macro ratios or weight, lo weight loss macro percentages. And you'll find hundreds of articles giving you lots of advice on how to calculate rate ratios. Don't overthink it. Don't over research it. Find something that seems legit. Um, that's pretty close to my numbers because I've found they're all within that range ish. Um, unless you've got specific circumstances like your underweight, don't do a weight loss diet if you're underweight. Uh, and if you're obese, it can switch your macros, macro targets, and it can also switch the maximum safe deficit in your daily energy intake a little bit. So do some specific research if you are obese or you're underweight, but otherwise, you know, those are, those are some high level, uh, good examples to use. So if you've liked the video and you found it useful, hit that like button. If you want to see videos every Tuesday of my weight loss journey and all the tips and tricks on nutrition, fitness, and, and weight loss that I pick up along the way uh, with my standard no BS approach, um, then mash that subscribe button. Uh, leave me a comment if, you, um, if you've tried macro uh, 
uh, if you've calculated macros, if, whether you've used what I've presented today or you've used it before, let me know your experiences with it. So tell me if you had to tweak your macros after using some calculations you grabbed off the internet. I'd be interested to see how much you need to tweak them. I've certainly had to tweak them myself uh, over the last few weeks. Uh, anyway, that's all I've got time for. So I will see you next Tuesday from a completely different location. I'll catch you then.